Hello, I'm JJ Plagiarisms. I am a Star Wars channel with the goal of being an everyman on the franchise. If you clicked on this video, I am going to assume you have never watched Star Wars before and know nothing about it other than it exists. And you are looking for the ultimate guide on how to experience Star Wars for the first time. Here, I am going to categorize Star Wars content and discuss the essentials and stuff you should look out for. I'm also going to explain why you should heed my advice without giving away spoilers. So let's begin. Now as a hardcore Star Wars fan, I tend to categorize Star Wars into three camps. Pure Star Wars, Disney Star Wars, and Expanded Universe Star Wars. If you're going to start experiencing Star Wars, you're going to need to start with pure Star Wars. I define pure Star Wars as the first six theatrical releases. That includes Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, Episode 4, A New Hope, Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back, and Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. The reason why this is pure Star Wars is because these are the films created by the series creator George Lucas. Star Wars is his story. When it comes to the watch order of the movies, I always go with Episode 1 to 6, because that is George Lucas' recommended order. That's how he intended the series to be watched. Plain and simple. If you watched other beginner's guides, a lot of them will probably say to watch the latter three movies, known as the original trilogy first, for one of two main reasons. One, the original trilogy came out first from the late 1970s to the early 80s, and two, that a lot of surprises will be ruined by the prequel trilogy. Let me explain why they're wrong, and why you should absolutely go with the chronological order. First of all, People are clinging on to how they originally saw the movies, rather than what the movies actually are, and how they were designed to be watched. People who say that you should watch the original trilogy first, are people who could not readapt to the new watching order. It might sound hard to readjust your viewing experience, but that is the reason to watch the prequel trilogy first. George Lucas made it important to have the prequel trilogy be pivotal to the saga, but only if it's watched first. The only reason I would watch the original trilogy first is to see how the movies evolved with special effects or whatever, but George Lucas remastered the original trilogy with new and refined effects, so it's probably not going to do anything. The second reason I have is that the prequel trilogy replaces the old reveals from the original trilogy with new twists and reveals, so it's not like George didn't compensate. Also, the reveals from the original trilogy are the most spoiled plot twists in film history, referenced in many movies like Toy Story 2. The twists from the prequels don't have this issue. Also, this argument against watching the prequels first can also be done in reverse. The original trilogy are the eventual destination of the prequel trilogy, so both would spoil each other in some way. It's easier to just go in chronological order for a smoother story experience. I know it may be tempting to watch the original trilogy first because of the release order, but really, your enjoyment of the films the first time will improve with watching Star Wars the way you're supposed to. If you decide to ignore my advice and reasoning, then just make sure you're ready to watch the chronological order of Star Wars movies with an open mind next time. As I said, making the readjustment is not easy, so that's why I strongly recommend watching the movies in chronological order. They're numbered the way they are for a reason. So with that being said, now that we've got pure Star Wars out of the way, I next wanted to talk about what to do if you are a fan of pure Star Wars and want more. There's really two official directions you could go, either Expanded Universe Star Wars or Disney Star Wars. Disney Star Wars is where all the post-Revenge of the Sith films belong to. That includes Episode 7 The Force Awakens, Episode 8 The Last Jedi, and Episode 9 The Rise of Skywalker plus the two spin-off films Rogue One and Solo. If you're going to watch the sequel trilogy after watching George Lucas's complete saga, please keep in mind that they are not the definitive sequels to George's work. George was personally unhappy with The Force Awakens in particular, 
So just keep that in mind before watching the movies labeled 7, 8, and 9. They are sequels, but not definitive sequels. In fact, there was a sequel trilogy made before the Disney sequel trilogy. It is commonly known as the Thrawn Trilogy, a trilogy of novels written from 1991 to 1993, and the first big continuation of the original trilogy. They were made even before the prequels. There is no definitive sequel trilogy. There are many stories that aim to continue Return of the Jedi. And there are even stories that predate The Phantom Menace in the Star Wars timeline, as well as stories that take place in between the movies. When you're done with pure Star Wars, and you want more, there are generally two Star Wars timelines to follow. The Expanded Universe slash Legends timeline, or the Disney Star Wars timeline. The Expanded Universe timeline has been largely discontinued since around 2012 to 2014, with the only storyline continued is additional expansions for the Old Republic MMO. Disney Star Wars is the more mainstream timeline, as that is the timeline that includes shows such as The Clone Wars, Rebels, Resistance, The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, Kenobi, Andor, and so on. The Expanded Universe was more about books, comics, and video games. And when I say video games, the main ones usually come from the PlayStation 2 slash original Xbox era and beforehand. There were Star Wars games published during the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 era, but nowhere near as much as the previous eras. Depending on what mediums you commonly experience, you can get a very different experience with Star Wars content. There were TV shows that came out during the pre-2012 stage of Star Wars, such as Ewoks, Droids, and the Star Wars Clone Wars micro series from 2003. Not to be confused with THE Clone Wars that first aired in 2008. In terms of the Clone Wars 2008 show, that show did come out pre-Disney, but Expanded Universe fans tend to ignore it since that show completely ignores previous storylines such as the Clone Wars micro series and the Star Wars Republic comics. When it comes to the Expanded Universe, everything pre-2008 definitely should be followed, while content other than the Clone Wars that came out around or after 2008 should be treated with a grain of salt depending on what kind of story it is. The Force Unleashed video game duology is something that would pass with flying colours, while novels such as Darth Plagueis and Kenobi should be questioned to a small extent. But since they only contain small references to the 2008 Clone Wars show, they can easily be replaced and ignored by head canon. The Clone Wars 2008 is officially a part of Disney's canon, as it's one of the few things they kept after they rebooted the Star Wars timeline. Aside from that, the only things they kept was the six mainline Star Wars movies and a Darth Maul Son of Dathomir comic related to the Clone Wars show. Disney Star Wars has also had a similar problem with continuity recently. The Clone Wars Season 7 and the TV series Tales of the Jedi contradicted the Ahsoka novel from 2016, so their canon isn't 100% consistent either. So just be ready for some storylines that may contradict each other in both timelines, especially when factoring in TV series. So when it comes to personal recommended content I like outside of pure Star Wars, examples from the Expanded Universe include the Thrawn Trilogy novels, which includes Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and The Last Command in that order, plus the Knights of the Old Republic games, a duology of role-playing video games published in 2003 and 2004 that have stories completely detached from the films and can be found for dirt cheap prices on Steam and requires only a decent enough computer to run, or they can be played on Nintendo Switch iPad, or backwards compatible on any Xbox console. In Disney canon, I tend not to like it, but my favourite content would probably be Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, an adventure game released in 2019 on PlayStation 4, Xbox One and PC. If there's anything I didn't mention that you want answered, there's a Star Wars wiki named Wikipedia that has information on characters and stuff from both Star Wars timelines. Plus it chronicles novels and comics in order. If you can't find what you're looking for on that website, 
please leave a comment and I'll try to answer it to the best of my ability. With that being said, that is my complete beginner's guide on Star Wars. I tried to make this as unbiased and objective as possible. This is my opinion from what I've gathered from trying to do everything Star Wars on my channel. I'm JJ Plagiarisms, and until next time, what are stories about mystery boxes? Under the mountain.